Hello, good morning, everybody. I just realized my mic has been on mute, but now it's on. Uh, so sorry about that. Good morning again. I was just saying hello to everybody and welcoming everybody to this month's Success Converge and to another beautiful um, Saturday in the month of May. And I'm really, really looking forward to our conversation today. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining this session of Success Converge. We will be talking about the art of intentional excellence. And I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be an enjoyable moment for everyone who is going to be part of it today. And I hope that you will enjoy the session also. Um, so I'll just wait a little bit for a few minutes and see who and who is coming on. And then we will take it from there. While we do that, let me quickly prepare my slide for presentation. Let me share my screen. Okay, I think we're ready and good to go. So if you can hear me, um, just let me know in the comment right now and then we can take it from there. I guess you can hear me, but just to be sure that everybody can hear me. Um, just say good morning in the comment. Good morning, Coach Sam. Thanks for joining. Um, good morning, the other person that says I can hear you. Um, unfortunately, I can't see your name, but yeah, thanks for letting me know you can hear me. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so uh, without much ado or uh, taking too much time, um, we'll just kick off. Uh, my name is Ape Omede. If you're joining for the first time or uh, getting to know about Surface Convert for the first time, um, I very much appreciate having you and I welcome you on behalf of the entire team. Um, if you don't know about Success Convert, uh, Success Convert is a um, program that we run every month at um, Life Excel Resource Center as a, a platform to inspire and encourage um, people to live a life of excellence. Um, at such as Convert, we believe that everyone has the capacity and the potential to be a person of excellence. And so through this platform, we, we draw inspiration and share with everybody who comes on the platform to, 
to join us at each of our events. And Life Excel, which is the model of the, of, of the program or the, the platform on which Success Converge is held, is a faith-based uh, youth development, um, um, non-national uh, um, organization with the mission to make excellence common in our time and our generation. We believe that everyone has the seed of excellence in them and we believe that an encounter with God helps to activate that seed of excellence. But this is something that a lot of people, um, you know, don't know uh, very much about or don't um, have access to understanding how it works. And so what we do at Life Excel is to help um, um, bring that to light to, you know, people to get to understand how they can be the best that God has created them to be to the instrument, instrumentality of, um, you know, the word of God. And um, in the past years that we've been running this program, we've seen um, lots of testimonies, lots of lives impacted and transformed in one way or the other. And we're very, very happy and grateful for the opportunity to be a blessing to people in our time and in our generation. So if you're joining us for the first time, we want to welcome you, we want to appreciate finding time to be with us um, in this session. And if you are a, a returnee or someone who is, who's been part of what we're doing since we started for some time you know, ago and you are here again this morning, I want you to know that I truly appreciate your presence. I truly appreciate your commitment. I truly appreciate your support. I truly appreciate you being part of the community and giving back to the community through your own spiritual way, which is either coming up on the programs and participating actively in, in the programs or contributing on the on, on platform on Facebook and otherwise. I really wanted to know that I truly appreciate you and appreciate your time, appreciate your presence and what you're doing to make Life Excel continue to be. Um, and that I want to encourage you to continue also to um, you know support us. We want to continue to count on your support. We want to continue to, continue to count on your encouragement to keep the vision going, the vision of making excellence come on in our time and our generation. Uh, so if you if you if you're here today and you're part of what we're about to share, I'd like you to you know, probably share this with uh, someone joining from, and so that they can also come on board and join us in today's conversation. So today I want to just talk about um, the art of intentional excellence. The art of intentional excellence. That's our conversation for today. So we'll just go right into it. All right, so let's start with the definition of excellence. Um, I don't know how many of you have had an opportunity to hear me define excellence. Um, but when it comes to excellence, I have a different idea. I have a different perspective to you know, the subject of excellence. For a lot of people, excellence is simply about outperforming or outshining um, other people when you are in the competition or something like that. So doing all my best to push everybody down so that I can be the one to be recognized, the only one that can be on the spotlight or in the spotlight is how our society defines excellence. That's how a lot of people think about excellence. And I mean, you, you can't blame anybody who holds that kind of ideology when it comes to excellence because that is what our society has made it to be. That is the picture that a lot of people have grown up with. Even in the classroom, the idea of excellence is if you, you score 80 and above, 90 or 100 or 100 in a particular subject. And you know, we've grown up with that all, all the day, all, in all our lives. 
going through school in the society and all that so there, there is no way you can blame anybody if that's the idea that, that they have about excellence but as people who have you know continued to evolve who have continued to grow and to develop you get to understand that some of the things you learned growing up were wrong some things you learned from people in the society were wrong some things that you learned from your family were wrong because of the exposure that probably you had you know, to come to, um, to know or to encounter rather so that has happened to me as well growing up i've come to a point where i have you know decided to redefine certain things in my life and one of those things is my understanding of excellence what is excellence is it still coming first in the class the way i knew it and i strove you know in school to you know to come up tops in the class and when i don't i feel bad and when someone comes first before me uh, maybe takes uh, the higher, uh, the best position before me. Uh, I feel a little bit jealous, and it happens to everybody because that's how we think, that's how we develop the knowledge and the idea, the perspective of life that we had growing up. But I've come to the realization that excellence is is doing something or being your best, so that whatever it is that you do and you become the best you can be an inspiration to other people so that they can draw strength draw ideas draw encouragement draw inspiration from you to be their own best and you do so by beating your own records every day so who is the challenge here who is the challenger here who is the opposition here who is the obstruction here? it's you and what you did yesterday that needs to change today it's you and what you did yesterday that requires an improvement on. It is you and what you did yesterday that wasn't as good as you wanted it to be. Not as good as other people want it to be. Because when you start thinking about how good others want it to be, you are driving yourself into the danger of perfection perfection and perfectionism which is totally different from excellence and that's not the topic for today but the point i'm trying to make is this that when you are talking about being an excellent person you're talking about yourself and your records and beating them every day and you're doing that not to impress others or to be in a good book of others but to beat your own records and inspire other people to be their best. So I just wanted to bring, you know, bring that, bring that to mind again before we go into the conversation. Now, you will agree with me that, here it's not the fact that this is, what I've just said is what excellence is or should be. Excellence is not very common. It is not every day you wake up, you go out there, and you see people exhibiting excellence. As a matter of fact, when you look around you today, you see more of mediocrity. You see more of people who don't care about attention to details. You see more people who don't care about putting in the best that they need to, to get the best result. You see people who don't care about protocols. You see people who don't care about you know ideals anymore just people just want to do what they want to do so as a result we live in a society where excellence is not very common and that is the reason why our vision life excel and my personal dream my personal purpose i believe i understand and i know is to help make excellence come on in my time and in my generation so my driving force is the fact that excellence is not common in our generation but it should be it should be. Excellence should be because if we're all created by God in the image of God, and God is an excellent God, then there is no reason why you and I should not be excellent. 
because being the product of God's imagination, God's hands work, it means that whatever is in God or is found in God should be found in us as well. But that's not the case. And there are a lot of factors, you know, responsible for that. And we can't exhaust all of those factors in today's conversation. We're going to just um, discuss one of the factors. So, but excellence is not common. Now, the problem is not with excellence. That excellence is not common in our time, in our generation, in our, uh, um, in our day. It's not because excellence is a problem. No, it's not because excellence is a problem. So out of a thousand players, you see only maybe a few of them are excellent. Out of a thousand cooks like we had a few, few days or weeks ago, all in Nigeria and all, out of a thousand cooks, maybe one or two or three or four or five, I mean, very limited percentage are doing well. Out of all the speakers, out of all the coaches, out of all the ministers, out of all, whatever it is you can think of, builders, teachers, lecturers, researchers, at the end of the day, only a few make it to a class on where is this person is the other person. And the problem is not because excellence, uh, the problem is not with excellence itself. The problem is that people live without intentionality. People live without intentionality. And that's why we're going to be talking about the art of intentional excellence in this conversation. Because the problem is not with excellence, the problem is with us as people. How do we approach the subject of excellence? How do we respond to the subject of excellence? How do we view the subject of excellence? How do we attend to the subject of excellence? And if we as people do not come to a place where we, we begin to channel our lifestyles towards intentionality, then we'll still continue to live in a time and a day where excellence will not be very rampant. But that is what we want to combat through that excellence combat. So the reason is because excellence is an art, right? So it is not common because people don't live with intentionality. Or there is something that is that is at the background of that intentionality. And that thing is that excellence is an art. And the art of excellence requires you to be intentional. And like every other art, it's not easy, it's not simple, it's not something that you can wake up any day and do. Why? Because when you talk about an art, what it means is, is that a skill is involved, and that skill is specific to a certain thing. And it doesn't just come overnight, it takes time to acquire that. And that is true practice. I mean, you put yourself to practice over a particular thing, doing the same thing over again and again and again. And you develop a skill that becomes an art. So excellence is an art. And it's an art that requires a level of intentionality. When you see a beautiful building out there, it is an art of architecture, and building construction, engineering that produced that building. When you see a painting, a beautiful painting, and you admire the painting, it's an art of drawing, art of uh, painting, mixing of colors and stuff like that. The skills involved with all the, you know, develop that painting. When you see a beautiful picture, it's an art skill bond over a period of time in photography that produced the picture and you are when you see beautiful dress the same thing art of you know, fashion and accuracy in measurements and all that you know could have produced that that fashion 
So when you see an excellent person, what you're seeing is someone who has mastered the art of intentionality, someone who has mastered the art of not just thinking about something, but actually going beyond thinking and taking actions. So when we talk about excellence, one thing that is involved in achieving excellence or becoming a person of excellence is the art of intentionality. And this is a quality that every excellent person possesses. So any excellent person you see, like I said, is an art that excellent people have developed. Just the same way when you see a beautiful construction, you know that this is an art of someone who is an expert in, in architecture or in building construction and stuff like that. So when you see someone who is excellent, that's must be out of intentionality. And it's a, a quality that is possessed by everybody that is excellent. So if you consider yourself an excellent person, then it means that you do the art of intentionality. And if you haven't considered yourself or have, not come, or have not come to a level where you think that you are an excellent person, it means that you're still struggling with this art of intentionality. The flair of not just thinking about something, but going beyond thinking to actually think whatever it is. So when we talk about the art of intentionality, as, we, as it relates to excellence, we're talking about the ability take good intentions whatever it is maybe good plans good ideas because everybody has skills i mean everybody has ideas everybody has intention like if you if 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 i ask you what you want to do right now with your life i'm sure you could give me hundreds of things you want to do with your life and all of them will be very beautiful all of them will be very wonderful things if i ask you what's your plan for the next 10 years or the next five you will give me great plans of what you want to do with your life in the next five or ten years. But where the art of intentionality comes to play in the whole picture is now that you have the ability to not just have good intentions, have good plans for your life, for your future, for your community, for anything at all, but having the ability to skillfully convert those intentions plans into good actions that will yield excellent outcomes so your ability to take good intentions good plans good ideas good projects plans proposals and all that and skillfully convert them into good actions that yield excellent result is what is is called or referred to as the art of intentionality as the art of intentionality and this is very very critical in becoming a person of excellence it is a quality or a characteristic that is possessed by every person. so john maxwell says that an unintentional life accepts everything and does nothing and that is not the kind of life that you really want to, to, to like because doing nothing means that you can experience excellence because excellence requires you to do something and doing it in a unique and special way, in a different way from the way other people are doing it. So if you don't do anything, if you're unintentional about life and you don't do anything, then there's no way you can experience excellence. But an intentional life embraces only the things that will add to the mission of significance, only the things that will add to the mission of scope. With intentionality comes the ability to narrow down your priority. With intentionality comes your ability to understand what is truly relevant to your life. With intentionality comes your ability to take the right decisions and prioritize your energy, prioritize your finances, prioritize your time, your skills, your relationship, your network in such a way that you will be able to produce the best outcome that will beat the records that you set for yourself and be an inspiration to other people. So, what are the things 
that intentional people do to help them to achieve intentional life. Of course, there are things they do that the single them out that helps them to become intentionally excellent. So those are things that we're going to be looking at in the um, remaining conversation for today's um, success convert. So we're going to look at about five things that intentional people do that help them to achieve intentional excellence. Number one is that the intentional people intentionally recognize their moment of awakening. Now, this is very, very important. I wasn't always someone who think who thinks that excellence was possible. Like I wasn't born with the mindset or the ideology that what excellence is a possibility. In fact, I came into contact with the spirit of excellence after I graduated from the university with my first degree and when I came into contact with the spirit of excellence, there was something that happened to me that made me realize that I could have done better. So, for, for you to begin your journey in excellence, you must come to a point in your life where you will intentionally experience that moment of awakening. And what that means is that you wake up one day and you are tired of being a mediocre. You wake up one day and you are tired of being at the same level. You wake up one day and you are tired of struggling to make ends meet. You wake up one day and you are tired of being at the mercy of other people because you have the capacity you have the potential, you have the ability inside of you to be the best that God has created you to be. And until you come to that point, the moment of awakening, where you, you, you realize that inside of you, you will deem your subconscious person, your subconscious mind, that you have what it takes to be an effective person, you will never, ever be able to you know, grow into the person of experience. And it's something you do intentionally. Now, one of the stories, greatest stories in the scriptures is the story of the parable of the prodigal son. A lot of people see the story from a, a different perspective. Everybody has the perspective about you know, the story of the prodigal son. In everything that God had given to him. I mean, everything that belonged to him in the father's house and moving out from the house and living a you know, unworthy life and then after a while but the thing that stands out for me in that story is that day that that boy woke up realizing that he was living a life of mediocrity created of, or rather born into a family of excellence, born into an opportunity of excellence. He had everything he needed to be the best. He had everything he needed to, uh, to, to be a prince. Everything, everything he needed to be a prince, to be an example, to stand out from the crowd. But he didn't realize all that. He moved away from those opportunities and went into a different kind of life, which I as the life of a mediocrity. Imagine someone who is a prince living in, in a pig pen, living with pigs, eating pigs food and stuff like that. There is no amount of mediocrity or degradation that is worse than that, especially for someone like that boy who had every opportunity to live a life of excellence. But one thing that stands out from that story is that a day came in his life and he suddenly realized, he suddenly recognized, he had an awakening. And he intentionally recognized that awakening. He said, what am I doing here? I'm not supposed to be this mediocre. I'm not supposed to be a failure. I'm not supposed to be begging for food 
owner can have acres of land producing food. I'm not supposed to be begging for clothes when I'm supposed to have a a a a, a clothes manufacturing plant. I'm not supposed to be begging for money when I'm supposed to be the one who is giving money to people. A period or a moment of awakening and he recognized it. It is in that recognition of his state that the action that transformed his life occurred. So he didn't just intend, but he took action. But that intention was based on that moment of awakening. So as a, as a person, you must come to a point where you, you ask yourself questions about where are what you are doing. How do they relate to where you are supposed to be? How do they relate? How do they reflect who you've been created to be? How does things that are happening around you reflect the excellence that is inside of you? And if you come to that point and you find out that, no, I think that everything that is happening around me is reflecting mediocrity or is reflecting a different kind of life from what is expected of me then you need to experience the moment of awakening. You need to come to your senses and tell yourself that this is not what I'm supposed to be. And it must be an intentional action. It must be an intentional action. It must be an intentional action. It must be something that you, you think of, you put your mind to, and then it should now drive you to action. What the prodigal son was, I don't want to stay in this situation again. I don't want to be a mediocre again. I don't want to, to live in penury when I can have everything I need in life. For you, it might be, I don't want to live in my cocoon again where I have the gifts and talents and potentials to be the best in whatever God has called me to do. And then take a step and move out. So this, the, the, this, the, the story of the prodigal son, especially at that point where he came to an awakening is very key and very critical to his life. And so it is with every one of us. You must come to that point and intentionally take action about it. So I came to it. I came to it. I came to the point where I felt like, no, this is not who I'm supposed to be. I'm living less than I'm supposed to be. To be living, I'm, I'm, I'm more than what is happening in my life or what is happening around me. And this, this is the first step. You know, when I, when I, you know, talk about or discuss the intentional excellence model, the this is the very first step. Waking that period of our awakening, waking up from our state of mediocrity and realizing the potential we have, you know, to be the best is the first step. And if you don't get to that level, you will not move to the next step. Of being a person of excellence. So it's very, very important. So a day comes in your life when you realize that you have been living below your potential and you intentionally decide to step up again. So I, my prayer is that that day will be today for somebody. You know, that, that that day will be today for someone. That you will just wake up and you ask yourself, what am I doing? I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be somewhere. I'm supposed to be in. I mean, I'm supposed to be on the throne. I'm supposed to be in the midst of the best of the best. I'm supposed to be somewhere where my gifts and talents pleasures are valued. That's where I'm supposed to be. So a day comes in your life when you realize that and you decide to step up again, whatever it is that you're doing. So that's the first thing that intentional people do to experience intentional excellence. A intentionally recognize the moment of awakening and they take action. Second is that they intentionally embrace change every single day. So people who have the capacity to embrace change, people who have the capacity to not be afraid of change, will always have the capacity 
to experience excellence. People who do not have fear for change, change phobia, will always have the capacity for transformation. Because there is no excellence until you change something in your life. There must be something you need to change. Like if you say, okay, I need to move my, my as a businessman, move my turnover from 500,000 Naira to 2.5 million in a year. You need change. It, I mean, it, it, it won't happen unless there are, for you to be at 500,000 turnover as a business person, it means that there are things that you're doing or not doing. Either of it. And both are important. Both are 50 50, I mean, 50 percent important to each other to balance what is happening in life. And so you need to move one of them over to have 100 percent at one end to be able to experience change. If you say that people um, don't show up in your concert, you're a musician or whatever it is, a speaker or something like that. And you're asking yourself, what's the problem? Then it appears that probably there are things that you need to change. And for you to have that transformation that you're looking for, you must be able to express, embrace those changes. You must be willing to embrace them. Because your inability to embrace them means that those things will still remain there. Nothing changes until the change takes place. So what happens is that every day that comes to you is an opportunity. And what an opportunity is that? It's an opportunity to change something for the purpose of excellence in your life and your business. So every day that comes your way comes with an opportunity. And what you can ask yourself as it comes, as every day comes to you is, what can I change today? to be a better person. Do I need to increase the number of hours I write? Do I need to increase the number of books I read? Do I need to increase the number of podcasts I listen to? Do I need to increase my network? Do I need to reduce the number of people in my network? Do I need to reprioritize my time? Do I need to reprioritize the, the places I go to? What is it that you, you need to change? You need to ask yourself that every day because intentional people do that. They embrace change every day and they allow that change to produce excellence for them. And what I mean by that is they allow that change to be a change that increases their value in the society, increases their value in whatever it is they do, they can become better, gives them the opportunity, the change that they, enco they, they, they undergo, that they embrace, gives them the opportunity to beat the records that they set them for themselves or to be the record of what they did yesterday so that today will be better so every day brings an opportunity every day brings an opportunity for something to change in your life or the purpose of being a person of excellence in your life or in your business and intentional uh intentionally excellent people know this and they practice it Change can be painful, that's one thing, and it's the truth. It, it can be very painful. There are times that some of the changes that we need to undergo could be, you know, changes of uh, of denial. It, it denying ourselves things that we enjoy, denying, denying our, ourselves things that are, you know, self-gratifying. But there might be things that we need to let go. There might be things that we need to give up. And so sometimes change can be very, very painful. It may be change of, you know, if you're someone who is spending a lot, to change the way you spend and begin to put your, I mean, your expenses or whatever it is that you're spending into areas that will help you to become better. Maybe if you spend too much money on clothing and stuff like that, you could now decide to change that to spend money on buying books. You know, subscribe to podcasts, going for trainings and stuff like that. And what that means is that if you're someone who enjoys looking good, and 
I mean, it doesn't mean that if you need to be an excellent person that you don't need to be good. You, you, you need to live good as an excellent person. But in a situation where looking good is denying you an opportunity to be your better self, then you need to change. And so a change can be very painful if you're someone who loves to look good, but you can't desire to look good at the expense of being a better person. So, so change sometimes can be very painful. It might even be that you need to resign a particular position to prepare yourself for a better position with another company. And that kind of change, that kind of resignation can never be easy. It might be to give up a friendship or give up a relationship that you've invested a lot into both that relationship or that friendship or that network is not helping you to increase in value. It's not helping you to be a person of excellence. So change must come in. And again, in that situation, change becomes very painful. But without it, without going through that change, your next level will remain on that. It will become impossible. Will remain impossible. Because for every next level you want to go, so it comes with a change. Something must change for it to be whether it is painful or not, something must change. But you have to undergo that to be able to move to that level. And intentionally excellent people are able to embrace this thing every day. Forgoing the pain because they know that the reward of self change is much more better than remaining in the same level all the time. So excellent people are intentional about things that they need to change in their life and they go ahead and they change them. Yeah. So they they, they 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 know the things that they need to change in their life and they go ahead and change them irrespective of the pain or the troubles or whatever it is that it may cost them they don't care about it they just go ahead